Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite things to talk about ever, which is Seattle. So I've lived in Seattle for almost seven years now. I've lived in a bunch of different neighborhoods within Seattle. I love food, I love exploring Seattle. Even now I find things that I didn't know existed, but I have a Seattle food account, which is called Seattle Foods Capades. I have tons of food recommendations on there and my food slash travel TikTok is Lifescapades. So three years ago, I did a really comprehensive video on what to see, eat, do, where to stay when you're visiting Seattle. I talked kind of about just a little bit of background on Seattle, the tech scene, the different neighborhoods, where to stay and how to get around. If you haven't seen that video, definitely watch that video in addition to this one because I'm not gonna be repeating some stuff that I talked about in that video, but I wanted this video to be just like a very easy, three day itinerary for you if you're gonna be coming to Seattle, what I recommend doing in order and where I recommend eating, the views, just everything. I think if you only have three days, what you could pack into it and then some alternatives as well. But if you're someone who doesn't like planning and you just want some tips from someone who lives here, I'm trying to make your life easy. So if you enjoy this video and you find it helpful, and you use some of the tips for planning your next trip, you can give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It does help my channel out, so thank you. So like I said in the last video, my number one tip is to leave downtown. <laughs> Downtown's great. You can hit up the classic Seattle touristy things, but there's so many other areas of Seattle that are incredible and that I think make it why so many people love living in Seattle. And if you only stay downtown, you miss out on so much of Seattle. There are tons of different neighborhoods in Seattle. So you can still see the classic downtown stuff, but also, you know, get out. <laughs> All right, I have everything planned out on my phone here. So if I'm looking down, that's why. So I'm gonna have some alternatives at the end of this where you can either add in if you have some extra time in your days or you can swap out for things that might not sound as appealing to you. Everyone has different travel preferences and everything. But I'm also gonna be making recommendations for breakfast, lunch, and dinner each day. If you're someone who's on a budget and you don't wanna spend that much money when you're traveling, totally understand. You can always go to Trader Joe's or something, have you know breakfast in your hotel room, bring lunches to go, whatever, to make it more affordable. But I do wanna give you my restaurant recommendations. So we're gonna start off at breakfast in Oddfellows. Oddfellows is in Capitol Hill. It is one of my favorite spots for brunch or breakfast. They just have such good food. It's a good atmosphere. If you have to sit outside, they have this little tiny little like outside patio between brick walls with string lights and it's just really cute and really good food, get their biscuits. And then you can walk around Capitol Hill afterwards, which there's just a ton of cool little shops in Capitol Hill. There's some secondhand stores in Capitol Hill. So you could easily spend like an hour or so after breakfast, just walking around Capitol Hill and checking out the little shops and stuff. I always get the light rail train, whatever mixed up. I'm just gonna say train for the sake of making it easy, but you can always just type in your destination where you're going on Google Maps and it'll tell you exactly what you know, train or bus or whatever to get on. But there is a stop directly from Capitol Hill to downtown. You could also walk it if you're trying to get those steps in. And Seattle has scooters everywhere now. So you can either go up the Space Needle, but if you do that, you have to reserve tickets in the morning, or at least that's how it used to be. I'm pretty sure it's still like that. You reserve the tickets in the morning for a time to come back later in the afternoon. So just make sure you do that beforehand. But I actually recommend going to Columbia Tower instead of up the Space Needle. Columbia Tower is a skyscraper. It's taller than the Space Needle and you get I think an even better view than from the Space Needle. You can see the Space Needle from it. If you're ready for lunch, depending on the timing, I would say head over to Pike's Place. Pike's Place, right up there with the Space Needle, is like the most touristy you can get in Seattle. But as someone who's lived here for a long time, I still think it's fun to check out every now and then. I probably go, I don't know, like two or three times a year. There are some good food spots in there. It's fun to get flowers. Proshki Proshki is definitely worth stopping in. If you kind of want to just get like, a few things from different little small places in Pike's Place and then split it with whoever you're with. I kind of think that's the way to go. I don't have one specific place where I'm like, you have to go here as far as food. You are with about 95% of tourists when you go to Pike Place. If you've never been to Seattle, you gotta go to Pike Place. Okay, depending on timing, now that it's afternoon, Personally, if this was me traveling, I would wanna go back to the hotel room for a couple hours, rest a little bit, recharge, shower, change clothes for the night, you know? If you're someone who just likes to go, 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 again, at the end, I'll have some things that you can add on. My favorite rooftop bar slash, you can just hang out and get food there too, that I definitely think is worth going to at some point in your trip, I schedule it into day one, is M Bar. Try and go here. Hopefully you have good weather because Seattle when it's sunny is just unreal. I wanted to make this video now because I think 
a lot of people are starting to travel again. It's the summer. I've gotten a lot of messages from you guys saying you're coming and what should you do? But go to Embar. You have a view of the Space Needle, of downtown and Lake Union. And if it's a sunny day, you can see tons of boats on Lake Union. Or if you want to go later, it's a good spot to check out the sunset. I'm going to put a few more rooftop bar options here. Also, just a heads up, I think especially because of COVID, you definitely need to make reservations about two to three weeks in advance for most places. You can still walk up to places and usually get in, but you'll probably have like at least an hour wait. Smith Tower Observatory is also great, especially if it's like colder outside or rainy because they have like an indoor area where you can sit. It was the first skyscraper in Seattle to give you a little history lesson as you go up the elevator. For dinner, I'm just gonna mention this place because maybe they've changed the hours by the time this video is going up or you're seeing it. I think one of the coolest places to eat is actually in the Amazon Spheres, which is also pretty close to M Bar. You could walk there. But Wilmot's Ghost is the restaurant inside the Spheres. It's a really cute atmosphere and their focaccia bread is <laughs> incredible. I've literally been dreaming and drooling about their focaccia bread for the last year. But at least when I'm filming this, they have super weird hours. Like I think when I looked last, they were saying they closed at 7.30 on like a Saturday. So I don't quite know what's going on with that, but you could always just get a drink there because it's a cool atmosphere or you know, go earlier in the day. You could go for lunch if you want a nice lunch or you could head to Fremont, which there's tons of restaurants in Fremont, but my favorite one for just like atmosphere, it's kind of a restaurant slash bar, but the food is really good. If you're in the Mexican mood, it's Pablo y Pablo. It's definitely like, you know, modern kind of trendy Mexican. I'm from San Diego. I love my burritos. This is not like that kind of Mexican food. Okay. This is like just trendy Mexican food, super fun atmosphere. And the reason why I'm recommending this place specifically is because before or after dinner, depending on your timing, walk down to Gasworks Park. It's literally about two blocks from there. One of the best views in Seattle. Every time people come to Seattle and they don't go to Gasworks Park, I'm just bummed for you, man. Gasworks Park is just beautiful. Also, if you wanted to save money, maybe not eat out this night or you're just stuffed, you could just make a little like picnic, go to the grocery store and bring it to Gasworks Park. A lot of people picnic there, hang out there all day. It's just like a really grassy, pretty park right on the water with a whole view of downtown. If you're someone who's trying to go out while you're in Seattle, I'm gonna have my bar recommendations and like late night stuff at the end, but you could obviously go to that after dinner on day one. Okay, so day two, we're gonna start with either you can do like a full sit down breakfast brunch kind of thing at Terra Plata, which is again in Capitol Hill. They have a really nice rooftop section. You definitely have to make reservations ahead of time for Terra Plata. Or if you just wanna like grab, you know, a scone or something and some coffee, go to Queen Anne Coffee Co. in Upper Queen Anne. The reason why I chose this place is because a, they have freaking amazing cinnamon rolls, best cinnamon roll I've had in Seattle. So good, they're homemade, they also have hollow there. But if you go there for breakfast in Upper Queen Anne, it's a cute little like dainty street to walk around. I used to live in Upper Queen Anne, but you can also walk from Queen Anne Coffee Co. directly to Cary Park, which is again, one of Seattle's most popular parks. And if you do go there and you're trying to get photos from there, definitely go in the morning. It gets really packed with tourists throughout the day. And sometimes you like can't even get a spot against the rails. If you wanna get a good Seattle photo, check out the view. You could even like, get your coffee, walk there, sip your coffee with the view. And if you're into real estate or just into seeing what different neighborhoods in Seattle could look like, walk, okay, which direction is this? <laughs> Pretty sure it's west. Walk down West Highland Drive going west and you will see some mansions. There's some huge, really old, cool looking houses on that street right by Cary Park. And if you go all the way to the end, it'll dead end you into this smaller park in a different kind of lookout. You're looking at the sound and Magnolia, so it's just like a different kind of view. But it's only a few blocks down that street, and if you're curious what some houses here look like, walk down that street. <laughs> that's not every house, that's like a really high-end street in Seattle. If you're at Cary Park, if you wanna walk like a couple miles, you can walk from Cary Park to Fremont, or you can take an Uber. It's about like a five to seven minute Uber ride, it's very close. But now you can head to Fremont. The Fremont Troll is one of the like classic Seattle things to see. It's kind of just like funky. If you're in Fremont anyways, you might as well see it. But Fremont is just a fun area to walk around. Fremont and Ballard both have tons of cute little shops. If you're in Fremont for lunch, I think a really cool like underrated kind of spot is Cafe Turco. If you're into Mediterranean food, really good food. And it's also just right under the Fremont Bridge. So it's kind of a cool little spot. It's right across from the water. You don't have like a water view from it, but you can walk across the street afterwards and you're right on Lake Union. You can sit down or take it to go sandwich place is Stoneway Cafe. Stoneway, that street in Fremont has tons of restaurants on it 
pretty sure, yeah, I have some recommendations for dinner places on Stoneway. Okay, I don't know if it's just because I've been talking for so long now. This is the second video I'm filming today, by the way. I have a whole <laughs> makeup look up if you wanna know what makeup I'm wearing, random. I have a whole video on that. But my mouth is just like not catching up to my brain right now. So anyways, if you are gonna be here in the warmer months, and you're into paddle boarding or kayaking or you're down to try, super fun to do. There's a handful of different places on <laughs> different waters in Seattle. Seattle has the sound, Lake Union, Lake Washington. There's a bunch of different waterways. But you could go kayak, paddle boarding, or you can rent like a little rowboat actually at the Center for Wooden Boats on Lake Union. So I think Lake Union is a fun spot to go paddle boarding. You could also do it in Green Lake or you could go to Golden Gardens. If that's not your cup of tea and you're just trying to like chill, you could also just hang out on the beach at Golden Gardens. Or if you wanna be by the water but you don't wanna do an activity, <laughs> I totally understand. You can go to Westward and just get a drink and hang out outside. Westward is a restaurant that used to be really good. And now they're not getting such great reviews. I don't know what's happening. I haven't been there in a while, but I know you can just get a drink and hang out and it's right on the water. Or from here, you could also go to the Mountaineering Club. Wow, it just got really bright, which is a newer kind of rooftop bar that's really cool. They have really cool different drinks and it's just a good view. It's in the U District, so it's really close to Fremont. U District is the area around University of Washington. It's mostly students around there. It's not really an area I would say like you have to check out, but the UW campus is actually really beautiful. Parts of their campus look like you're in Europe. So if you're into architecture, could be worth checking out, especially if you're coming in the spring. Cherry blossom trees are wild at UW. So if you just had your pre-dinner drinks at Mountaineering Club or at Westward, now we're heading to Ballard for dinner. So I have a few different options here. Stone Burner is kind of just like a go-to, good atmosphere, good food, good burgers. Or I also really love San Fermo. It's this tiny little Italian restaurant that's in like an old kind of house really cute they have an outdoor patio and i think right now because of COVID, they have like street seating too and it's right in like the heart of ballard where there's tons of shops you can walk around there before dinner or after dinner if they're still open by the way i just want to clarify if you're a seattle viewer watching this these aren't what i consider to be like the top top restaurants in seattle or anything it's a combination of location the atmosphere what I think people would like while visiting and also just proximity to other things that we're seeing and also still obviously being good food in good places. Things in Seattle close pretty early. For being a fairly major city, Seattle just shuts down super early. Like it is difficult to find food here after about 11 p.m. <laughs> pretty much everything is shut down. Just keep that in mind if you're planning on going out and everything, you'll wanna start your night a couple hours earlier than you would if you were in like New York or London. If you want some dessert in Ballard, Hotcakes is probably like the most popular place. There's also a Hotcakes location in Capitol Hill, but if you're into chocolate, I have heard it's amazing. I have been there, but I'm just not a chocolate person. So I'm not like obsessed with it, but I know most people who like chocolate are obsessed with it. If you didn't go to Golden Gardens earlier and you want a good spot to see the sunset, I would say head over to Golden Gardens now. Depending on what you're wearing from dinner, you could either bike from Ballard. They have tons of the little, you know, bike rental things. You could bike there, take the scooter, probably about 15 minutes on the bike, it's not far. Go to Golden Gardens for the sunset. And Golden Gardens, by the way, isn't a garden. It's like, it's a full on beach. So it's just a really good spot to hang out if you want a good sunset view. You can see the boats coming in. Also something cool to see in Ballard are the locks. It's where the boats go in, up, through. When people visit, I usually take them to the locks because it's just like a cool thing. You're right on the water, you can see the boats right there. I wouldn't say like take an Uber to go out of your way to the locks, but if you're already in Ballard eating dinner or something or walking around, it's really close right in Ballard. Okay, so day three, I think could go a lot of different ways. I was kind of torn, but I think at the end of the day, it just depends on what you're most interested in doing. I feel like a lot of people, when they travel to like a city, like to go shopping. So if you're in the shopping mood, you could, you know, take a few hours, go shopping downtown Seattle. Those are where all of our like main stores are. Honestly, the best shopping is in Bellevue, but don't go to Bellevue if you're visiting Seattle. It's just, it's very out of the way. and you know you can find those stores in most cities but what i planned out here is a little bit of a little half day adventure okay so west seattle alki is one of the most underrated parts of seattle it is so beautiful but the west seattle bridge has cracked it's cracked <laughs> now alki in west seattle is basically like on an island but something that i always recommend people do if they're coming to seattle and they have like an extra day or you know a few hours even if you don't want to spend time in west seattle there's a water taxi that goes from downtown to alki 
I want to say it's around five to seven dollars maximum I think it's cheaper if you have an orca card but you basically get the best view in a quick little boat ride. I think it's a 10 to 15 minute boat ride, but you get such a good view of downtown with the Space Needle in the water. It's just a fun thing to do. If you have kids and they like boats, it would be fun to go on, or if you just wanna go on a boat yourself, I love taking the water taxi. I feel like it's one of the most affordable things you could do with like the most impact you know it's just one of those memorable cool things so if you just want to do the boat ride you could you know just go there go back but if you want to spend a couple hours in alki i think it's totally worth doing it's a really cute little like beachy kind of town or if you didn't do kayaks or paddle boarding the other day you could also do it right from the water taxi where it drops off there's a place you can rent them right there and it's super pretty neither uber or get the bikes or scooters and just go about I think it's like 1.7 miles from where the water taxi drops off to like the good part of the little town on Alki, Alki Beach. Alki I think has one of the best beaches in Seattle. There's beach volleyball, it's really nice and wide. A ton of people in the summer like to just rollerblade along there, hang out. But for lunch, Marination Station is right where it drops off. And I really like Marination Station. They have good little sliders, tacos, and just kind of quick little lunch things and if you're hungry when you get dropped off at the water taxi that's just like a quick good option to do either before or after your kayaking or biking or whatever if you decide not to go to alki a lot of people like going to bainbridge you can take the ferry from downtown seattle to bainbridge i want to say it's about half hour to 40 minute ferry ride bainbridge is fun to go to if you've never been i've been there probably like 10 times at this point and i think once you've gone once you don't really need to go back Bainbridge just has a bunch of little shops. It's the famous like fairy shot on Grey's Anatomy where you see the whole city. But again, if you do the water taxi, you get a really similar kind of view. Or if you're a museum person, the Chihuly Glass Museum is beautiful. Or maybe you've been to Seattle a few times and you've already done those things that I mentioned. You could also head to Green Lake. Green Lake is just a really beautiful lake. You can, you can go swimming in there or you can just walk around it. There's a bunch of little coffee shops and stuff. It's just another little neighborhood of Seattle that especially if it's nice out is a nice little place to kind of walk around. I don't think you should go to Green Lake if this is like your first time in Seattle or you don't think you're gonna be back for a while. I just wanted to throw in kind of an alternate little option there. For dinner on day three, one of my all time favorite places since I've moved to Seattle has consistently been List. List is in Belltown. They have the best happy hour food you can get pasta steak everything for around like 10 to 12 dollars during happy hour and it's super good food it's a cute little cozy like romantic kind of atmosphere or for day three you could go back to fremont and go on stoneway north there's a few different places go to either rock creek rock creek is good it's on the nicer side but it's not like you have to full-on dress up but if you want kind of a nice dinner for your last night rock creek is fun to go to my parents always love going to rock creek or Manolin or jewel which are both on stoneway north that street we talked about earlier in fremont i talked about some nicer restaurants in my last video if you're like maybe celebrating an anniversary or a birthday or something but i'll leave some of those down below and again definitely check out the other video because there are other food recommendations in that video that i'm not mentioning in this video but now i'm going to tell you some places to go out and just some random things that you could swap in or some extras so if you're visiting for a special occasion a birthday something whatever i would actually recommend doing this not in the summer because it's already pretty hot unless you're doing this at sunset but you can rent these things called hot tub boats. I've done it twice now and I think it's totally worth it. It is so cool. You just steer the boat with like a little joystick. It's on South Lake Union. You're in a hot tub on the water. And it's such a cool like splurge thing to do. I wouldn't recommend doing it like in the middle of summer. I did that one time and we were just like sweating. So don't do that. Do it either at sunset. Once it's like cooled down, you'll have a really pretty sunset view or do it in the winter when it's like really cold outside and then you can be in the warm water but still be outside you know it's pretty it's cool argosy cruises if you're into like learning more about seattle and you're and you like those kinds of things the argosy cruises are pretty cool i think one of them takes you through the locks actually a couple other places that i didn't mention for going out in my last video is kings and percy's both of those are in ballard if you just want kind of more chill places to go out so as far as where to stay like the airbnb hotel situation and how to get around should you rent a car what should you do i talked all about that in my last video so i actually ended up mentioning the other like alternatives as i was going so that's I think it for you guys. Those are three full days of what to do in Seattle. If you want more up-to-date Seattle things, you can follow Seattle Food Scapades or my TikTok Life Scapades. Okay, this video has taken me literally almost three hours to film because my camera just keeps overheating and then I have to stop and wait and turn it back on. 
And I only had about two sentences left to tell you guys. So we're just ending this off on my phone, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it helpful if you are planning a Seattle trip. If you do any of these things, definitely tag me on Instagram, comment down below, let me know how it went. I just want everyone to have the best possible Seattle trip and get out of downtown a bit, see all the reasons why Seattle people love living here. Seattle's just beautiful, especially when it's sunny out. It's the best. So I hope you have a good time. Hope you hit some good weather and I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful for you, you can give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. I'll link my other Seattle videos down below. If you wanna watch more Seattle content, I also have one on what it's like to live here. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.